hello pray and share warriors how are y'all doing tonight it is already tuesday this week yesterday was an interesting day um i got up really early went to assist family and uh, so i just didn't make it last night sorry about that and um, i didn't make it on sunday night either but i'm here tonight and I want to talk about Jaira. God is our provider. I think that's how I headed this. <laughs> Sorry. I actually changed the name. Jaira, our, prov our provider. Jaira, our provider. It's kind of hard to say. Okay. Well, I hope you had an awesome day today. I'm trying to get used to my shorter hair. It seems like, I don't know. It is just, I've had it in a ponytail today because it was hot. All right, well, let's jump into some prayer. And then we're going to look up some scripture and I'll read what I shared on Facebook today. I do encourage you when I do these song shares to go and listen to the song. Go and see what this song means to you, okay? God, we just thank you. We just praise you and thank you that um, you are on your throne and you are in control, God. There is nothing that gets by you. God, thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector, our shelter in the storm and our strength and our refuge and so much more, God. You are to us. God, we thank you that you are magnificent and powerful and mighty, and you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. But yet you are kind and loving and compassionate, and you are uh, trustworthy. You are faithful. You are only truth, and you are patient. You want none to perish, God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home, God. We just pray for them to see where they are, God, to repent, to return to you, and to let you reconcile the relationship that was once there. God, we just pray for all the disasters that are going on right now, the floods, floods in many areas, floods in China, floods in Germany, floods in Europe, floods, I'm sure, here in America somewhere. Well, even floods in Oman, in the middle of the desert, God, floods, floods. God, there's fires, there's wildfires. We pray for the people in those. We pray for the people in the floods. We pray for the earthquake people, people that are in earthquakes. We pray, God, for the people in Cuba and Haiti and South Africa in France and Greece that are just proclaiming that they want freedom. God, we pray for these governments to uh, have compassion on their people. We pray, God, for the people in Florida that are still recovering, people from that building collapse. God, be with them. Give them peace, comfort, and strength. We pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We pray for peace, comfort, and strength. COVID is rearing its ugly head again, God. We just pray that um, people would be healed if they are sick, God. And we just praise you and thank you, God. We know that you protect us. We know that you provide for us. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, okay, my pray and share warriors. Let's talk about Jehovah Jireh. 
He is our provider. He is all we need. He's more than enough. Okay, so I woke up singing this song yesterday morning, but because of having to get up early and go help family yesterday, I never did get a chance to share it. So I love this song and message by Elevation Worship in Maverick City Music. I love the lyrics of this song. This song is Gyra. Uh, I hear it on the radio a lot. I don't know. Uh, if you listen to Christian music, you've probably heard it on the radio too. Uh, God is our provider, and if we trust Him, it is more than enough. Sometimes it is hard to be content in whatever circumstance we are in, but God loves us and provides for us. Sometimes we don't feel appreciated and as loved as we would like to be, but God is enough during those times. We pray. We need to stay focused on the most important things of life. We are loved and chosen by God for this time and purpose. Are, are times hard? Yes, sometimes they are. We feel alone sometimes and that many people don't know that we exist. There are so many lonely people out there that just don't even feel like people know that they exist. Oh, lost. God is enough. His love is superior to all. He is the ultimate provider of all. We have enough if Jesus is our Savior. We need nothing else but Him. Our home is secured in heaven if we are saved through Jesus. You know, people say they build houses and they go, this is my forever home. None of my homes here on earth are my forever home. This, this is my forever home, the one that I'm pointing to. This is my forever home. We must be content in all circumstances here. Yes, people are going to hurt our feelings, and yes, we're going to be sad, and we're going to be happy, and we're going to be glad, and we're going to go through so many emotions here, but we need to focus on trying to be content in all circumstances. Remember that God's love for us is so tremendous, we can only imagine how much. Is Jesus your Savior today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. I was looking for my cat. God wants none to perish. John three sixteen through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. I thought she was in here sleeping earlier. She's like down there. She doesn't want to come visit. Okay, so that is my song share for today. That is what I shared. Now I'm going to share some scripture. And then we'll do a gospel message. Okay, so let's go to Genesis 22, 13. And this is the story about Abraham and Isaac. And I'm not going to read the whole thing because I did that, I think, the last time I talked about this song. I did the whole story. Oh, excuse me. Of Jacob, I mean, not of Jacob, of Abraham and Isaac. But I'm just going to skip down to 13. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his thorns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. So God provided a ram. He provided a ram right at the last moment. Sometimes he provides us things right at the last moment, but he is our provider and he does love us. He does treasure us. If you don't feel treasured by people, 
know that you are treasured by God. Okay, so let's read Job. Now oh, my cat's meowing. She wants out. Let's read Job 38. You're stuck, Gracie. Job 38, 41. And we all know the story of Job. It says, Who provideth for the raven his food when his young ones cry unto God? They wander for lack of meat. So who provides for the raven? Who provides for all the birds out there and all the animals? You know, God is their provider. Jehovah Jireh is their provider also. So let's look at uh, First Chronicles. I think it's back this way. First Chronicles three seventeen through nineteen. Okay, First Chronicles three seventeen through nineteen says the sons of Jeconia, Asur, Salathiel, his son. Melchorim also, and Padiah and Shenazar, Jekamia, Hoshama, and Nebadiah. And the sons of Padiah were Zerubbabel and Shemel, and the sons. This is not. Oh, wait. 17. 17, 19. Not three. There's not even three on there. That's Chronicles. All right. Those were some really hard words to read. Let's try 17 through 19. And yet this was a small thing in thine eyes, O God, for thou hast also spoken of thy servant's house for a great while to come, and hast regarded me according to the estate of a man of high degree, O Lord God, what can David speak more to thee for the honor of thy servant? For thou hast thy servant, O Lord, for thy servant's sake, and according to thine own heart, hast thou all this greatness in making known all these great things. O Lord, there is none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people Israel, whom God went to redeem, to be his own people, to make thee a name of greatness and terribleness, by driving out nations from before thy people, whom thou hast redeemed out of Egypt. So, I'm not sure who is talking in this. It says David. It is David. Okay. So this is David talking to God about what all God has done. You know, God provides for us. He is our provider. There are a lot of times that I'm just like, God, I don't know how we're going to do this. We've got this bill due. I need groceries in the house. I need other things in the house. You know, how are we going to do this? But God is faithful, and God always comes through in the provision. Just like with Abraham, Abraham and Isaac. Abraham was going to sacrifice his son because he was being obedient to God. But God provided at the last moment a sacrifice. Sometimes we have to wait until the last moment to get our provision. But God always comes through because he is our provider. Okay. 29.12. First Chronicles 29.12. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all, and in thine hands is power and might. And in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. 
Now therefore, O God, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name. But who am I, and what is my people, that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. For we are strangers before thee, and sojourners, as were all our fathers, our days on the earth, are as a shadow, and there is none abiding. So again, God gives all. God gives all. He gives us everything that we need. He gives us a beautiful creation to look at. He gives us food, water, shelter, the things that we need, the things that we ask of, He gives. I wanted a cat. He gave me a cat. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder what were you thinking, God? But I love my cat. I love my cat because I missed my other cat. Okay, so let's look in Psalms 104, uh, 10 through 18. Psalms 104, 10 through 18. Okay, he sendeth, he sendeth, he sendeth the springs into the valleys which run among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. By them shall the fowls of the heaven have their habitation, which sing among the branches. He watereth the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of man. And he may bring forth food out of the earth and wine that maketh glad the heart of man and oil to make his face to shine and bread which strengtheneth man's heart. The trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon which he hath planted where the birds make their nests, as for the stork, the fir trees are her house. The high hills are a refuge for the wild goats, and the rocks for the, for the conies. He appointed the moon for seasons, and the sun knoweth its, his going down. Thou makest darkness, and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. The young lions roar after their prey and seek their meat from God. The sun ariseth, they gather themselves together and lay them down in their dens. Man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are thy works! In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. So is this great and wide sea, wherein are things creeping innumerable, both small and great beasts. There go the ships. There is that Leviathan, whom thou hast made to play therein. These wait all upon thee, that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. That thou givest them they gather. Thou openest thine hand. They are filled with good. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die, and return to dust. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. The glory of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. He looketh on the earth, and it trembleth. He toucheth the hills, and they smoke. I will sing unto the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Lord. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless thou the Lord, O my soul. Praise ye the Lord. So that... You know, that is just what God does. He doesn't only provide for us. He provides for his creation. He created everything. 
He is the creator of all things, all things he created. He created them for his plan and his purpose. He created all of us unique. We are not all the same. How would you like to live in a world where everyone was like you? How boring would that be? He created us all unique. He doesn't want us to be like each other. He doesn't want us to think like each other. He wants us all to be unique, just like he created us. Okay. That was so good. I love Psalms. I know I've said that before, but I really love Psalms. It is one of my favorite places to go when I'm sad. I just want to camp out in Psalms. Okay, Matthew 6, 25 through 33. And this is Jesus speaking. And this is part of the Sermon on the Mount. Not all of it, but part of it. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body. What ye shall put on is not, the, is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment, and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of them. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, in his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So we are not, God will provide what we need. We Jesus says, do not worry about it. Do not worry about it. God will take care of it. He will take care of us. So Luke 12, 24. Let's see what it says. Luke 12, 24. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barns, and God feedeth them, how much more are ye better than the fowls? And this is just kind of a repetition of what we just read. So we're going to move on to Philippians 4.18. Philippians 4, 18 says this, For I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice, acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So again, God will supply all of our needs. He is our provider. He is our provider. 
and he loves us in our provision. He loves us. He treasures us. Okay, Revelation 3, 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I, will, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man taketh thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. New Jerusalem, right there. Right there is New Jerusalem, or it's a picture of New Jerusalem. It is, I'm sure, New Jerusalem, as beautiful as, I love this picture, as beautiful as it is, I can only imagine what the New Jerusalem looks like. We can only imagine what the New Jerusalem looks like. Okay, well, it is time to do a salvation message. And what do I want to do? I needed a drink of water. That was a good thing. Let's do this. I flipped this off into the floor the other day. And so it was in my floor for a few days. So it's kind of long, but it's kind of a small book too. So it says, do you know for certain that you have eternal life and that you will go to heaven when you die? That is a great question. And a lot of people don't have an answer for that. God wants you to be sure. The Bible says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. 1 John 5, 13. Another question to consider is, suppose you were standing before God right now, and he asked you, why should I let you into my heaven? And God's heaven, it, it does belong to him. What do you think you would say? You may not know what you would say, but you can know because God loves you and has a purpose for your life. It's a really thick piece of paper. The Bible states it this way, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16 so God's purpose is that we have eternal life. We receive eternal life as a free gift. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6, 23. We can live a full and meaningful life right now. I have come that they might have life, that they may have life and have it to the full. John 10, 10. We will spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. I go and prepare a place for you. I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. John 14, 3. Eternal life gives meaning to life, yet our sinful nature keeps us from fulfilling God's purpose for our lives. Thus, our need is to understand our problem. We are all sinners by nature and by choice. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 We cannot save ourselves, not by works, so that no one can boast. Ephesians 2.9 We deserve death and hell. The wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 It is true that God is holy and just and must punish sin. Yet he loves us and has provided forgiveness for our sin. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. 
The good news is that God has provided for the forgiveness of our sins. God's provision is Jesus Christ. Jesus is God and became man. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among, among us. John 1, 1, 14. Jesus died for us on the cross. For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit. 1 Peter 3.18 Jesus was resurrected from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Romans 4.25 That is good news, but the only way Jesus can affect our lives is for us to receive him. The Bible says, Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1 12. The choice is ours, thus our response is to receive Jesus. We must repent of our sin. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Acts 3 19. Repentance is not just feeling sorry for our sin. They should repent and turn to God and prove their repentance by their deeds. Acts 26 20. Repentance is turning to God through Jesus and away from our sin. It's like making a U-turn. As we turn, we must place our faith in Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of yourselves. This is a gift of God. Ephesians 2, 8. Faith is not just believing facts about Jesus. You believe that there is one God, good, even the demons believe that in shudder, James 2.19. Faith is trusting in Jesus. It is like taking a trip on an airplane. You will never make the trip until you trust the plane enough to board it. Three important questions. Does what you have been reading make sense to you? Is there any reason you would not be willing to receive God's gift of eternal life? Are you willing to place your faith in Jesus right now and turn from your sins? The Bible says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10, 13. You need to ask the Lord Jesus to save you. Read this prayer and see if it says what you want to say to God. Dear God, I know that Jesus is your son and that he died on the cross and was raised from the dead. I know I have sinned and need forgiveness. I am willing to turn from my sins and receive Jesus as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So call on the Lord in repentance and faith, using these or similar words of your own, and Jesus will become your Savior and Lord. Welcome to the family of God. If you sincerely prayed this prayer, you have just made the most important decision of your life. You can be sure you are saved and have eternal life. As you begin your new journey, it is important to realize that Jesus wants to do more than just reside in your life. He wants to be Lord of your life. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Romans 10, 9-10 Confessing Jesus as Lord is more than just words. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Matthew seven twenty one. 
Confessing Jesus as Lord means trusting Him to direct our lives. Trusting Jesus to direct our lives is like driving down the highway with another person. As long as you are driving, you are in charge. If you realize you don't know the way but the other person does, you might say, take the wheel and drive. Then the other person is in charge and the two of you take the route he or she chooses. Jesus, you take control and I will go with you. As evidence of confessing Jesus as Lord, you will want to identify with him. The New Testament way of identification is to confess Jesus publicly, Matthew 10, 32 through 33, and to follow him in baptism and church membership, Acts 2, 41. Your assurance, you know you have eternal life because God keeps his promises. You repented of your sins, Acts 3.19. You placed your faith in Jesus, Ephesians 2.8-9. God heard your prayer. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, Romans 10.13. God recorded your commitment. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven, Luke 10.20. You need to grow as a Christian. The Bible calls new Christians babes in Christ, 1 Corinthians 3.11. Without certain essentials, babies will not develop normally. The church is to a new Christian what the home and family are to a baby. You identify with your new family by confessing Jesus publicly, by experiencing believers' baptism. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Acts 2.41 Attend church Sunday and share with your pastor that you want to be baptized and become a member of the church. Praying is to spiritual life what breathing is to physical life. Breathing must be regular and continuous. The Bible says pray continually, 1 Thessalonians 5.17. Learn to be specific in your praying. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. God's word is to a new Christian what good food is to a baby. Good food is a daily requirement for proper growth. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. 1 Peter 2, 2. My best time for daily prayer and Bible reading is blank. And you fill in the blank. Mine is in the morning. Learning to witness as a new Christian to a new Christian. <laughs> learning to witness is to a new Christian what learning to walk is to a baby. Christ commands us to share the good news with others. You will be my witnesses. Acts 1, 8. Okay. And then the rest of this is... There are things to fill out. So if you accepted Jesus, welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is now being written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and the angels are rejoicing at this moment. All right. Well, it is time. It is time to give you God's blessing. And to pray again and to get off of here so I can go feed our son. Number six, twenty-four through twenty-six. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. So that is God's blessing to you. That was God's that was um, a blessing that Aaron asked for for the Israelites. Okay. Let's pray. Let's thank God because He is enough. He is more than enough. God, we just thank You because You are more than enough, God. You are our provider. God, You care about us. You love us so deeply, God. We thank You for that. I pray for 
anyone that comes on here. I pray for blessings and protection and provision for them and their families. I pray that if any of them do not know Jesus as their Savior, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray, God, for truth to continue to rise in all areas in our country and all over the world, God. We pray for truth over lies. We just pray for truth to reign eternal. We know that truth does reign eternal. We thank you for that. God, we just pray that you would give us the boldness to go and share your truth in the gospel of Jesus with others. God, we just pray. We pray for all the unrest in our country and all over the world. God, we just pray these people would come to you through Jesus, that they would learn more about you, that people would come to them and be the love and compassion of Jesus that they would feel the arms of Jesus around them, that people would come and meet their needs and shine the light of Jesus for them. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, well, my pray and share warriors, it is time for me to get off of here. I see my friend Josie has joined me. <laughs> I'm fixing to get off, Josie. Um, I hope y'all have an awesome rest of your evening and an awesome tomorrow. Much love and cyber hugs until I see you again. Good night.